In fact, this is actually our closing, uh, our last week in our series, Blessing and Blisters. And uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, our theme verse has been found in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 19. If you don't have it, uh, your Bible with you, we're going to have it on the screen right there. And here's what it says. For I'm about to do something new. This is God, the, the God that we believe created the heavens and the earth. This is him speaking. For I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Listen, here's the big idea of our series. Is that God wants to do something new in your life. Two people. God wants to do something new in your life. And, and so uh, this whole series has been how do we step into the new that God has for us. And the week one we started with, it starts with renewing our mind. So we got to think differently. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about how we got to see differently. Or last week, how, how we see differently. And this week, I love it. This is, my, I'm pro- this is probably like my favorite my favorite week out of all. It's so my, like have you guys ever just gone to a buffet and like you know you're going to go into a buffet so like you wear like your sweatpants. You know the clothes that are loose on you, right? Like I'm so excited about this message. I wore my, I wore my, uh, my stretchy pants and shirts this morning <laughs> because I, I feel like, uh, I feel like this is going to be a meal, a meal that, that uh, if you receive it, uh, will will help you grow and expand in, in what God has for you. So uh, the verse that we're going to be looking at today is found in Mark chapter 11, and then we're going to pray. The next day, this is, uh, uh, the next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hangry. Okay, now I know it says hungry, but watch, he's hangry. Watch, watch. Verse 13, seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out it had, to went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Now, uh, I, I don't claim to be a fig tree expert, but I do know this, that if there's leaves, there's figs. And so Jesus, seeing leaves, he expected there to be figs. Fig trees have, they go through multiple fruit seasons in one season. So Jesus, he saw leaves. He was expecting leaves. He's like, there's my lunch. Watch what happens. He realized that there's no figs on the tree. Then he said, verse 14, then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. That's hangry. So this morning I want to talk to you briefly from the subject, trees to mountains. Trees to mountains. Let's pray one more time and we'll get started. Father, we love you. God, we thank you just for your faithfulness and your kindness to us thus far. God, I thank you for what you're doing in this place. God, we want to acknowledge you this morning that, that you are here with us, God, and so we thank you for that. I pray right now uh, with this message that, that it would fall on good ground, God. Jesus, you said that the word, scripture, is only as good as the condition of our heart. And so we pray that our hearts would be pliable to what you want to do and what you want to say to us this morning. Because we want to leave here changed, not for our own benefit, but so that we can change the world around us. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Legos. How many of you guys love Legos? Oh, yes. Yeah, so so uh, my little girl just got into like this Lego thing thing that she she like to you know Legos right she likes doing Legos and I thought if I could be completely honest with you I was like I'm gonna start doing Legos with my daughter because I just think it's a great Instagram opportunity you know what I'm saying like <laughs> like you're judging me but that's okay like playing and having my wife be like hey babe take a picture of us right and then just posting it love playing with my daughter hashtag bless anyways so, so I'm like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Legos with my daughter. And so we started off with like this really small, uh, this, it's called Friends. Uh, and and it's, it was this little, like, like, I don't know what it was actually. Um, it was like a boathouse type thing. It was really small. It was maybe, maybe 50, 50 pieces. And so we were putting it together. And, um, and she was loving it. 
I was loving it. I, there's just something about building that I just I fully enjoy, right? And so we're building it. And then we finished it, and we were like, oh, this is amazing. Look what we created, you know? And she said, Daddy, can we do another Lego project? And I said, yes. So we went to Target. Hey. And uh, we went to Target, and, and, and we bought this, this tree house. It, it's a bigger, more pieces, and we're excited. We're, we're like, man, this is going to be phenomenal, right? And I love Legos because on the box it shows what the potential is. And uh, so, like, you see the cover on the box, you're like, man, this is, gonna, this is what it could be. But then you start off with little small pieces. And so we unpackage the Legos and we pour them out, out on the carpet, which FYI, don't do that. Like, start with each bag, work your way through the bags. Anyways, so they're all, they're just everywhere, okay? And we start putting them together. And I notice uh, my little girl, she starts, like, playing with the little Lego dolls. And I'm like, focus, focus, right? So she's like, sorry, Daddy. And so we're like, we're doing it again. And then she's like, not focusing again. So I just, I'm, I'm diligent, right? Because like, that's what I, that's, that's what I do, right? Like I'm just, I'm focused on finishing this Lego treehouse. And so I'm doing it, and I look up, and I notice she's not even there anymore. <laughs> so like, I'm working on this thing all by myself. And I'm like, where, where are you at? So I, I go find her, and I'm like, babe, like, we got to finish this thing, right? Like, I'm determined. I am a high D in the disc personality test. Like, I am task-oriented, and, like, I'm, and I'm like, we need to finish. And she's like, Dad, I'm done. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I don't want to do it anymore, Dad. It's too hard, Dad. There's too many small pieces. And I was like, okay, whatever, babe. So I went, I left her, and I just, I finished it by myself. <laughs> yes. And, and so, um, so I looked at it, and, I, and have, if you've ever put together a Lego anything, you realize how phenomenal that moment is when you could stand back and you're like, oh, it was done. But then I began to think about what my little girl was saying and how she was like, man, this is just, it's just too hard. Like, it's just, I, I, can't, I can't do it. She was frustrated with the little pieces. And I began thinking about the little pieces and how if you just stick with it, how those little pieces end up making something bigger. And I began to think about how that's very similar to our words, to the way that we speak. Like, on the surface, our words seem very small. But I want to propose to you this morning that your words, though they're small, if you keep building them, something great can happen from it. In fact, I want to say this this morning, that there is authority and power in your words. You may not see it with just one word, but if you keep letting it accumulate and you keep adding them together, eventually your little single words will grow into something bigger, something grand, or depending on how you use your words, maybe something not so great. But this morning, I want us to establish, as we're in week four of our series, our closing week, I want to establish the, the idea that there are power in your words. There's, there's power, there's authority in the things that proceed from your lips. In fact, in fact, we actually see this in the very beginning, the very beginning of creation, uh, that, that in Genesis, where, where God begins to create the heavens and the earth. One thing that we notice is that God turned nothing into something by his words. He said there, there, there was no sun in the sky, and he spoke into existence something that was not yet there. He said, let there be light, and there was light. God spoke to land when land and water were together. He spoke and said, let there be land, and there was land. He spoke into existence something that was not yet there. I need you to understand this part. He, he, he saw that there needed to be little creatures and bugs roaming around on earth. And though it wasn't currently there, he spoke it into existence, and it was there. So God, he's establishing us the very first thing, the very first thing that we see in Scripture that God models for us is the power of the spoken word. He's speaking into existence what is not yet there. 
dare I say, that if we are created in God's image, we too have the authority and the ability and the power to speak into existence, watch this, things that are not yet there. See, now I know what you may be thinking, John. You sound like Tony Robbins in that Netflix special where your pow- words are powerful and the oohs and ahs, but, but, but there's more. Tony Robbins got that from God. The power in your words, that the, there's something in them that if we can just begin to speak, something could happen. And it may not happen the very first, just like the Legos, just like how one Lego piece does not look like the final product. But if you keep adding and you're faithful to it and you keep stacking and you keep building, eventually those little pieces become something that is greater to what God has. And so not only did God model this, but Jesus modeled this in the text that we just read. Jesus, he's, he's heading out of town, and he stops by that fig tree. He's looking for the figs. He sees leaves. He's, leaves. he's like, man, I'm so hungry. I can't wait to eat a juicy fig. I don't even know if figs are juicy. I've never had a fig. But I'm just saying, like, they could be juicy. And if they are juicy, Jesus is like, ooh, look at the juicy fig. And so he's, he's expecting to eat something. Nothing's there. So Jesus, he kind of bows up to that fig tree. And he's like, you don't want to have any figs? Fine. Okay? And then he walks off. He like, (laughs) mic drop, walks off, okay? And so so they're headed back, right? Uh, So so they're headed back in, and um, they they, they do what they're doing in the city. This is where Jesus, he like, he, he gets a little upset, and he flips over the money tables in the temple, and he's just, he has this little, like, thing that he's doing. And so now he's leaving Jerusalem. He's heading out. And they pass by the fig tree that was alive, had leaves. They, they, they pass it by, and all of a sudden, Peter, uh, Peter is like, Jesus, look, look. He's like, guys, come here, look. That tree that you cursed and said that would be no fruit, look at it. It's dead now. To which Jesus would have been like, yeah. What did you expect? But Peter is amazed. He's amazed at the idea that this fig tree was now dead. This idea that the words that Jesus spoke were so powerful that it caused the fig tree to die. Now, there's so many different avenues and and, and roads that, that you can take with this passage, but I want us to pause and just look at Jesus' response when Peter is like, Jesus, look, that tree is dead. Watch Jesus' response. Verse 22 of Mark chapter 11. Jesus says, have faith in God. Truly I tell you. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Okay, so 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 Peter's like, yo, Jesus, you killed that tree. Woo! Now I think this may not be what you think, but this is what I think. I think a proper response to Peter's amazement of what he did to the tree. I think it should have been like this, or at least this is how I would have responded. Peter's like, Jesus, look what you did to the tree. That's amazing. If I'm Jesus, I would have been like, have faith in God. That's good. But then I would have said, Peter, if you have faith to throw the fig tree into the sea, it'll happen. Like that, that would be the natural response in a conversation, right? Peter's amazed that the tree's dead. I would have referenced that tree and been like, you too can throw the tree into the sea. Like that would be, in my mind, the natural tendency in a conversation. And yet, Jesus doesn't talk about the tree. He talks about a mountain. Jesus doesn't say, uh, go throw the fig tree into the sea. He says, 
if you speak to the mountain and tell it to get up and go into the sea, it will listen if you believe. What is Jesus establishing there? Why did he not talk about the fig tree and he went to the mountain? Here's why I think. Because sometimes the faith that we think we need is not enough for the things that we need to handle. And so Peter's amazed that, that, that Jesus did something to a fig tree, but Jesus is helping realign Peter's perspective and saying, hey, yes, that's amazing, but you can do even more with your words. Jesus is establishing this idea that from the smallest to the greatest of things, that if you speak it, if you believe it, something could happen. Something could happen. So this morning, I, I, I wonder, what's your mountain? What is that thing standing in the way between where you're at and where God, what God has for you? What is that mountain that's standing in your way from where you're at and where you need to be, where God's created and called you to be? See, because between uh, where we're at to where we're supposed to be is that new. That's the new place that God has for us. But we have to decide and figure out how are we going to handle the mountain? How, what are we going to do with that mountain that seems so dangerous and seems so terrifying, that's standing in our way? How do we handle it? And so Jesus, what he does is he breaks it down. He gives us three ways, and this is what we're going to do today, three ways that we speak to our mountain, okay? And then once I'm done with that, we'll pray, and, and you can go to Applebee's or Rebounders or <coughs> <coughs> And so here it is. How do we move? How do we speak to our mountains? The first one is this, is a line, a line. A line. Jesus says, have faith in God. In verse 22, he says, have faith in God. Now, 22 is very important because verse 22, it sets the foundation of what we're trying to believe for in verse 23. So Jesus, in verse 22, he's establishing this idea that we have to have faith in God. In fact, verse 22 really gives us the context of what we're believing for in verse 23. See, verse 22, and here's how it does that, is, and in verse 22, faith in God, Jesus is establishing two things. He's establishing the supremacy of who you, of who you hold at, at the top. And he also is establishing who you're surrendering to. So he says, have faith in God. So it's this idea that having faith in God means that I am aligning myself to who God is in my life and what he wants me to do with my life. So he's, a, he's aligning, he, he's helping us to align ourselves because here, here's, what's ha here's what happens when we don't align ourselves. We read verse 23, we forget about 22. We read verse 23, and we're like, yo, I can move any mountain with my words. Woo! And we're speaking to mountains that God never even intended us to move. And then we get frustrated. Why isn't he moving it? Let me rephrase that. I get frustrated when I'm like, God, why aren't you moving this mountain? And I have to take a step back, and I have to look, and and ask, like, am I aligned with the supremacy, so of who God is? And am I surrendering my wants and my will with God? See, because here's the deal. The more that you align yourself with God, the more your desires, or excuse me, the more God's desires becomes your desires. The more that you align yourself with God, his thoughts become your thoughts. His desires become your desires. And all of a sudden, I'm not praying for mountains that are outside of the scope of what God has for me. I'm praying in alignment of what he has for me. So 22 is very important. 
And so 22, it sets the foundation of you and I aligning ourselves to what God has. And then we get to uh, the second one. So after we align ourselves, we got to learn to speak. Okay, so here it is. Jesus says, have faith in God. Then he gets to verse 23. Excuse me. Say to the mountain, throw yourself into the sea. So once I align myself with what God has for me, then comes the moment where I begin to speak to my mountain. So once I align myself and once God reveals to me the mountains that I need to pray to get out of my way, then it's my moment to begin to speak to it. And here's what I'm learning about the mountains that we go through. Sometimes the mountains are people. Sometimes the mountains are situations. Sometimes the mountains are frustrations. But here, here's what I've learned. Is that our ability to speak, especially when it comes to people, is not me, the, the, the person that, that I think is the mountain is not the mountain. The person that I see that I think is the mountain, so that's my boss, my spouse, like that is not the mountain. Check this out. It's the spirit behind that person. Okay, now John, that's a little creepy. I know, I know, I know. But listen to what Paul writes in Ephesians. He says this. That we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers in the heavenly realm. So so you're not my issue. My co-worker is not my issue. I got to stop praying against my co-worker. I need to start praying for the jealousy that's driving my co-worker. See, my spouse is not the issue. I gotta start speaking to the anger that's driving my spouse. And all of a sudden, when we can understand that they're driven by something greater than what we see, we begin to speak to those. And check this out. I I love this part. Because we get excited about the other person being the mountain. Hey, sometimes you're the mountain, sometimes I'm the mountain. Sometimes I need to pray about any arrogance in my life, any pride in my life, any hatred in my life, any racism in my whatever it is. Sometimes I'm that issue. And so I don't need to pray for my boss. I just need to pray that I have more integrity to honor my boss with my time. Sometimes I don't even need to pray for my spouse. I need to pray for myself that I would stop being arrogant and pompous. Come on, we speak, we speak to our mountains. So we align ourselves with what God has. We align ourselves with his will. Then we speak it. We speak it. And those are the words that we just begin to speak one after another, one after another. I prayed one time and my boss is still a jerk. Well, keep praying. Rome wasn't built in a day. I've been praying for a week. Keep praying. John, I've done 14 days out of our 21 days of prayer. My situation still hasn't changed. Keep building. Keep building. Each word that you speak is a building block. It has power. Like your voice has power and authority to speak into existence. Things that are not there. And so I align myself. I speak. And then I love this part. This may be the hardest one. As I Now I agree. I agree. Watch what Jesus continues to say. So you speak to the mountain, throw yourself in the sea. And if you, whoops. And if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and it does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. And so Jesus, this is important because Jesus, he's establishing this idea that your words are not, are, are, are not something where you just. Oh, I was going with the music.
music. Hey. Come on, Disney on ice right there. <laughs> focus, John, focus. <laughs> what was I saying? Okay. Yes. So Jesus, he's setting up this idea that your words are not just things that you throw around, but there's a follow-up. There's a follow-through. So I don't just speak it because I could speak it. Like I could say anything, right? But Jesus said you don't just speak it, but you also have to believe it. You, let me say it this way. We have to live to the level of our speech. We have to live to the level of our words. See, because here's what happens for me in my life. I speak it, but I don't believe it, right? Because I'm like, God, I pray for my marriage. God, I thank you that, 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 that you're restoring our marriage. And then I'm like, dude, my wife is such a nag. Right? Or maybe, maybe you, your, your, your husband, you're like, oh, girl, my husband, he's, he's just, he's just, he's such a loser. But God, I pray for my marriage. I, you see what I'm saying? Like my words, my life is not living up to my words. If I'm speaking life, then I need to model life even when I don't see it. Oh, God, I thank you that, that you're healing my body. God, that the sickness in my body, I thank you that it has no authority over me. I'm speaking into existence. That which I did. And they were like, how are you doing? Oh, man, you know. Oh. I feel horrible. Now, here, I do want to clear this up because Christians are really good at ignoring situations, right? <laughs> like, like, Christians are crazy sometimes because Chris, Christians be like, they break their arm. They're like, you fine, bro? Yeah, praise God. <laughs> like, are you sure, bro? Your, your arm looks a little broken. No, praise God. It's, like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying be in denial. Like, I'm not saying, like, look at your situation and be like, everything's so dandy. Every, fa -la -la -la. Like, that's not what I'm saying. See what you see. But don't speak what you see. See your situation. Understand that, yes, my arm is broken, but I serve a God that can heal my broken arm, restore my broken arm, restore my marriage, restore my health, restore my... I told you I wore, I wore my, my buffet pants today. We live to the level of what we speak. And so if you have enough faith to pray, to move that mountain, here's what I'm saying. Just align your actions to follow it. Because did you know that your actions are a great, uh, a great, uh, your actions are a great, example of what you really believe. And so if I can get my actions to align with what I'm speaking, half the battle's already won. And so this morning, here, because I'm done, this morning, I'm urging you, understand the power in your words. Understand that you have the power and authority, the ability to speak into your situation, to speak into your 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 the, the, the into existence, what you don't see, because you were modeled and crafted after crafted after the God who modeled it for us. And if He can do it, you can do it. If He can speak it, you can speak it. This morning, listen, 2020, my heart for this series is for us to hit the ground running, pursuing all that God has for us in 2020. I want to, I want to embrace the good. Heck, I'll even embrace the bad if it means that I'm going to get to my good 
but I will not let go of it until I reach it. And that's my prayer for you, is that you would allow God to give you the strength to hold on, to fight through it, to press on, because he has something good for your life in 2020. He has something that he wants. John, I don't see it. And, uh, we renewed our thoughts. Our thoughts dictate our sight. And then our sight needs to align with our words that we speak.